so I guess the question is what what inspires or motivates, motivates me um, long story short I was born and raised in an environment of love and I was always encouraged to express myself and uh, to try new things and to join teams and groups and I was uh, allowed to succeed and I was allowed to fail from time to time and uh, even in my failures I was still loved so I have what's known as self-esteem um, <laughs> it's true um, and here's where this, the, the, the clincher I think I'm special so because I think I'm special I don't really think that the rules apply to me <laughs> because I'm never going to go out of my way to harm another human being. I'm never going to go out of my way to damage property. And I really go out of my way to not lie. Sometimes I have to be brutally honest, even about myself. And when there are forces in the world that are preventing me from achieving my own happiness, and when there are forces in the world that are preventing other people from achieving their own happiness, let alone existing in a state of love, it really bothers me because we're spending our money and we're training people to make other people suffer. And I have a problem with that. <laughs> it really hurts my heart. And then you do research on it and it hurts your mind as well because you realize that there's facts and statistics to back up what's hurting you. And um, I've been that way my whole life from at least grade, at least in kindergarten I was that way. And um, there's all sorts of millions of role models in the world that you can latch on to to see what happens when you stand up against injustice. When I, they tell you this in your final year at university uh, in literature. They don't tell you in year one because everyone would quit. <laughs> they tell you that the only writers that really mattered were those people that were banned or exiled or imprisoned or assassinated. And then you go, well, I don't want any of those things. <laughs> but then you realize that uh, worse things happen to better people. Like Bob Marley was, they shot him and his wife. They tried to assassinate him. John Lennon was assassinated. Like, how did Gandhi die? He got shot. So in the face of these things, you have to, you know, do what Danielle said. You have to try and maintain some optimism. Um, it can't go on like this forever. Uh, the bad guys can't always be in charge. The forces of destruction are not as powerful as the forces of creation. Otherwise, there'd be nothing here. And we're here, so we got stuff to do. So I guess this next, I was going to do a different poem, but I'm going to do this one because it's, it's kind of fun. Um, I, I write uh, serious poetry uh, at the highest level that I can with all the fancy university dictionary words and whatnot. And uh, I like doing that because I bring it to the politicians and the power structure to their face. Uh, that's a thrill. Um, but I, like this morning, I was at a grade school <laughs> doing workshops for like teenagers. So I'm like, okay, every once in a while you got to dumb it down or at least not even dumb it down, just write at the level that they can understand, right? Like Malcolm X said, break it down in a language that everybody can easily understand. So this will explain um, my foray into politics. This poem is called Coffee Bean. Oh. <laughs> okay, how many people in the room drink coffee? Show of hands. Put your hands up nice and high. Okay, how many people that drink coffee have ever grown their own coffee beans? How many people in the room smoke cigarettes? Yeah. How many people that smoke cigarettes or cigars or tobacco or pipes or whatever have ever grown their own tobacco? The number one rule of slavery is slaves do not grow their own crops. Not for food, not for medicine, not for pleasure, not for profit. That's the number one rule of slavery. Slaves do not grow their own crops. Not for food, not for medicine, not for pleasure, not for profit. And anybody here, if I gave you a green coffee bean, which is actually a coffee seed, would you be able to take that green coffee bean, which is actually a coffee seed, and put it in the earth? 
and give it the water and the nutrients and the sunshine and the air and the time that it needs to allow itself to turn itself into a coffee tree. And if you could, take that green coffee bean, which is actually a coffee seed, and put it in the earth and give it the water and the nutrients and the sunshine and the air and the time that it needs to allow itself to turn itself into a coffee tree. How would you induce that coffee tree to produce you coffee beans instead of coffee seeds? Does anybody know? You're all addicted to a psychotropic stimulant that you have never, ever grown and you have never, ever seen. Does that sound like slavery to you? Sounds like slavery to me. You wake up in the morning to a bell or a buzzer or a machine. You run into another room so you can go to another machine so you can filter hot water through your coffee beans so you can have your cup of coffee in the morning because you're addicted to caffeine. You are addicted to caffeine. You're addicted to caffeine. You're addicted to caffeine. You're addicted to caffeine. You're addicted to a psychotropic stimulant that you have never, ever grown and you have never, ever seen. Does that sound like slavery to you? Sounds like slavery to me. You get into another machine which takes you from point A to point B, work or school, wherever you're supposed to be. You sit down in front of a radioactive computer screen and instantaneously your brain has a chemical craving, a reflex reaction to desire for nicotine. Is it 10.15? Is it 10.15? Is it 10.15? Are you going to Tim Hortons or Timothy's or Second Cup or Starbucks? Will you please get something for me? A double, 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 please, because I'm jonesing. I need my fix. I need my caffeine and my nicotine. Won't go back to work without caffeine and nicotine. Can't continue my day without caffeine and nicotine. Won't finish school without caffeine and nicotine. Does that sound like slavery to you? It sounds like slavery to me. And some people, some people have the nerve some people have the gall. Some people have the audacity to tell me. Me, of all people, me, after I've run in three elections federally, that it's okay for you to have coffee and cigarettes, but I'm not supposed to smoke my own homegrown weed. Does that sound like slavery to you? Well, it sounds like slavery to me.